What's going on guys? Kevin with MA Performance here. Of course, the weather is starting to cool down out there, which means it's time for everybody's favorite season. I'm of course talking about boost season. <laughs> Before we hop into choosing the right intercooler for your setup, I did just want to let you guys know right now in honor of boost season, we do have a cooling sale going live on the website. You can check that out. We have discounts going on on any of our MA Performance intercoolers, ETS, Grim Speed, and many other of your favorite cooling products. So make sure you check that out. And without further ado, let's hop right into how to choose the right intercooler for your build. So when it comes time to choose the right intercooler for your build, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to look at is the actual size of the intercooler. The dimensions, of course, need to make sure that they fit within your specific application, but the actual thickness matters as well. Right here we have our WRX intercooler, and you can see this is quite a thick boy. Now there's plenty of different resources that you can find uh, that will determine what type of boost level uh, is going to be corresponding to the size that you need. The biggest thing when you're choosing the size is you wanna make sure that you don't oversize it for your application. Going with too big of a core size is going to contribute to more boost lag, which of course we all know is what you don't want. So make sure that you get the right core size. Most of the time you're gonna see anywhere from three to about three and a half inches. Um, that's gonna be about the standard for your streetcar setup. Generally gonna be good to about that 640 to 700 horsepower range. If you are going for a bit bigger than that, you might need to start looking at something like a four or four and a half inch, although those are a bit further and far in between. Moving along from core size, the other thing that you need to take into consideration is going to be the actual inlet and outlet size. Most of the time, you're going to find that these are going to be the same size on both the inlet and the outlet. However, on certain applications such as high boost, you might find that the inlet size is actually gonna be slightly larger than the outlet. This is because it's going to account for the pressure drop that you have as that intercooler uh, gets filled with all that good boost. Generally speaking, a two and a half to three and a half inch is gonna be more than sufficient for most streetcar applications. Um, however, in some of those higher boost or drag applications, you might find something a little bit bigger, such as a four or four and a half inch, or even up to a five, five and a half inch on some of those turbo diesel applications. Uh, once again, there's gonna be plenty of online calculators that'll show you exactly how much uh, boost you're gonna be running and what is efficient when it comes to the inlet and the outlet size. All right guys, now that you've correctly sized the intercooler for your needs, as well as the inlet and the outlet, it's time to look at the different options for the actual core design. There's gonna be two main core designs that you find on the market. The first being the tube and fin design. Now this is gonna be what you find on most OEM applications. The other design is gonna be like what we see here, which is what most aftermarket setups are gonna be, and that is gonna be the bar and plate design. This is gonna be much more efficient at actually keeping that air cool as it passes through the inner cooler. Uh, and really the only downside is that it is a little bit more expensive when it comes time to the actual manufacturing and cost of it. But that's the price you pay for cooler air. The last thing to touch on on the actual core design is gonna be the fin density. Now this is actually how many fins are in each row of these. Uh, generally is gonna be measured in fins per inch. This is something that you really can't figure out on your own if it's correctly sized. However, during the engineering data, this is where we really start to look at, and during that development phase, what is gonna be the correct amount of fins in there to make sure that the flow is still efficient while also doing the best at cooling the air down. When looking at the fin density, this is something that you're gonna be wanting to look for on the manufacturer's website when picking the intercooler. Again, this is where that engineering data really comes into play, and it'll tell you that the flow through the intercooler is efficient enough while also being able to cool down the air. The last thing that you wanna take a look at when choosing an intercooler is going to be the end tank design. Now there's a couple of different designs that you'll find, uh, and it's really gonna be more split up between the aftermarket and the OEM. On most OEMs, especially nowadays, you're going to find a plastic end tank. Problem with this is really, uh, you're gonna get more of those sharp jagged edges, which is going to slow down the actual airflow through there. They're also more prone to cracking and fatiguing over time, 
and when it's time to turn up the boost, they don't do quite as good of a job at holding that boost in. Uh, the other type of OEM design that you might see, especially on some older vehicles such as the Evo 8, is going to be a stamped aluminum. Now this is going to be better overall than your plastic OEM and tanks, uh, as it is going to be a little bit more rigid, hold up to some more abuse if you're tracking the car. However, they are going to be a bit more expensive and you're really not going to see them on modern cars today. Now moving on to more of the aftermarket segment, the two end tank designs that you're really going to see prevalent are going to be the welded aluminum. This is where you're going to have cutouts of aluminum that are welded together on the core here. For the most part, you're going to see these on more custom applications, something that needs to fit in a specific area. If you have a bigger intercooler or bigger inlets and outlets, the welded approach is going to be much more robust than your standard plastic and or stamped aluminum. However, being that it is welded, you just need to ensure that the welds are done correctly. Otherwise, you will start to have some leaking and uh Everybody knows that's not a good time. Lastly, uh, what you're going to see here and on most of our MA Performance products and a lot of the other aftermarket options is going to be either a cast or a billet aluminum design. Now, in our opinion and many others, this is going to be the best design for most of the aftermarket, again, unless it's a custom application, uh, because it is going to allow for the best airflow dynamics through the end tank, uh, as well as the most robust setup. Uh, and additionally, it is going to take away any of those fault points from the welds. Now, of course, as you can see here, there are still some welds on it. However, the amount of welds is significantly less than if you had a completely welded aluminum end tank. So those are some of the things to look for when you're choosing the right intercooler size. The last thing to touch on is that you want to make sure that the intercooler that you're buying has sufficient R&D and engineering data behind it to ensure that it is going to be effective for your application. And throughout this video, you guys have seen us doing just that with our soon to be released Civic Type R intercooler, as we did some testing on the track up at Brainerd during our Proving Grounds events to make sure that it is going to be flowing efficient and doing what it's supposed to do. Of course, if you guys have questions on intercooler sizing or anything of the like, you can always give us a call. We have a whole sales team here that can answer any of your questions or email us in. And I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. As always, leave a comment down below if there's anything that you'd like to see us talk about or if you have questions on the intercoolers. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for all of the awesome videos that we have coming out in the near future as well. Thanks guys and have a great day.